G'day guys, my name's Cuffy, and today I thought I'd give you a shop tour of my workshop because I'm about to make some changes around here and while I give you this shop tour, I'm going to go ahead and build this cute little side table but that won't be the focus of this video, I'm just going to skip through that build video a little bit to show you some of the machinery that I've got around here and how I work and what I need to do in order to make things work. So first up I need to find some material for this side table. Now I've got some material under this bench, I've got some material under the bench over there. And I've also got some material behind that saw over there. But the material I'll be using today will be under here somewhere. Now this is some of my nicer material. Now it's not necessarily set up for my nicer material. It's just the way that it happens to be. Like a lot of my nicer material gets cut shorter and shorter and shorter. And these are fairly short lengths. So I've got some myrtle here. That should be good enough for the top. So I'll get one panel here and another panel there. They'll make it about 300 mil wide for the top of this side table. <sighs> that might be a problem. We'll look at that in a minute. Then I need something for the legs. Now I like a little bit of contrast in my work. So that's some Jarrah. Got a great big dirty split through there, but I probably might need that, so I'll just put that there for a minute. Some black wood that's already been glued up. It's got a nice bit of curl through this grain here, that's Jarrah. I'll use that one for the legs. So this bench here in my back corner, that was the first bench that I made for this workshop. I've gone about and made a lot more benches for the workshop because I love bench space. It's good storage space and obviously it's good to work on too because nobody wants to work on the ground like a dog. So this bench here is set slightly lower than the surface of my table saw here or my panel saw so that if I've got a sheet of plywood that I need to rip, I can actually make that rip by having the sheet slightly above this table surface and it just slides across. So that's really good. So over there in the corner there, I've got a dust extractor, which is a twin bag, three horsepower dust extractor, a fairly generic unit with a 12 inch impeller. And I've set up my dust extraction system with PVC pipe, and that's a six inch pipe. Now there on my combo machine, I've got a four inch uh, flexi hose, and that's a very long flexi hose. Yeah, that's my blast gates, they're great. <laughs> but my really long flexi hose there, I use that to connect to the combo machine, to the router table, to my band saw, and so on and so forth. Over here at my saw, I've got an open port right there which is directly over the top of my wood lathe. So that's, that works really well when I'm just sanding on the wood lathe. It kicks up a lot of dust and it goes straight into the machine. And then there's, there was another pipe that I didn't show that you can see in that bottom left corner there that there was a pipe under the table saw. That was my pipe for the table saw. And that works well enough. And you can see that I've specifically stacked that timber to allow a little section to allow me to continue to rip wider boards. Otherwise the timber gets in the way. One of the biggest problems with my workshop is that I don't have enough power points. And that plug there, that's a 15 amp plug, which is not a standard plug. Our standard plugs are 10 amp plugs. So this machine here needs a 15 amp. So I've got a single 15 amp point and I need to use that same point to run my table saw as well as this machine. So I need to put a lead between the two of them. One day I'll get a spark here and get a second uh, circuit. But until then, I just have to run those leads and every now and then I trip over the bloody things. Although I'm not a big fan of these combo machines, for a home workshop they're very suitable because they give you a very wide jointer which comes in handy more often than not, though it does limit your thickness of capacity but if you're in a home workshop you probably don't have the room for a big thickness or anyway. Though this always irritates me, whenever I joint it always leaves a pile of stuff under it. <laughs> it irritates the hell out of me. Though this digi set thing to set the height with 
wouldn't live without it. You, if I ever bought a machine without one of those things, I'd, I just would not be happy with myself at all. I would go out of my way to make sure I install something similar. So this here is a carcass for a chest of drawers that I'm building for myself and because it's for myself it's very very low priority so I need to get it out of the way. I've got my other bench spare at the moment. This is my good Osioka workbench which I'm going to be needing for this project that I'm currently working on so I need to pick it up and get it out of here. And no I've never tripped over those wires when carrying something like that yet. <laughs> you know it's going to happen. So to glue this up on my back bench in the back corner here, I need to get some clamps and they're over on the side of my dust extractor cabinet. And I've got some 300mm Bessies, some, a couple of 600s, a couple of 1 meters, and a few 1500s which I rarely use. But today I'll use this uh, the 300s. old templates from about four and a half years ago from my original design I've gone out and laid out where the legs are going to be cut out of this board so now I can use the bandsaw which is right here that's where I keep it but I need to bring it out into the open so I can actually use it as you can see I've built a little wheely thing on the bottom makes it wheel around I like it I push it to about here so that I can then get the hose from my jointer which is about five meters long and then just drag it over and stick it on the pipe at the back. We're ready to go. So this little bandsaw, it's a 14 inch generic machine and it's not great, it's not bad, it's basically the cheapest thing that I could purchase which was going to be good enough for what I needed to do. I need to cut a few little curves and a little bit of small resawing work. If it does that, I'm happy, but I would prefer something bigger, but this is good enough. And I promised myself I would never glue up on this good workbench here, but that was a year ago and, well, things change. It's just so convenient to film from this location. <laughs> As I said earlier, the big wide jointer, it does come in handy more often than not. I really do enjoy having it there. Behind my panel saw here I've got some shelves and that's basically where all my finishing gear is, my masking tape, putty, anything else that basically has no home, it just gets dumped over here. I've got masking tape. I've got lots of them. There were quite a few voids in this uh, board from bug damage and just knots and whatnot. But the timber was so beautiful that you just live with it and you fill it up with a bit of epoxy and it looks a million bucks by the end of it. Houston, we have a bloody problem. And the problem is, it's this lever here. Now what this is, it's a combo machine, so it's got a thicknesser through here, which needs feed rollers to automatically feed the material through. But when I flip it around and use it as the jointer, the jointer doesn't need feed, feed rollers because I feed it with my own hands, obviously. So you can disengage the feed rollers to give all of the motor power to the, uh, the cutter head. And what this handle does, it connects or disconnects the feed rollers from the motor. So it's in the off position at the moment. The motor is not connected to the feed rollers. The feed rollers will sit there not spinning. 
if I move it to the on position, the feed rollers are now technically connected to the motor and they'll feed. But because this has gone all the way up to the top, I know for a fact the belt that connects to the pulley in the back here just isn't connected. So this one here is the culprit. This is supposed to go around this uh, pulley, which I need to disengage it. So that'll go around there now. And it sits in there like that. And so basically this just spins without activating the gear rolls. But once I tension that by using the lever around the side, that'll then uh, spin with the rollers. So I'm forever pulling that bandsaw around the workshop and getting it ready. Now I am very fortunate that my garage is as big as what it is. When me and my father built the house, we specifically built the garage a little bit bigger than normal. We weren't planning on having a workshop in here, it just, just the way that it happened and I got lucky that we built it bigger. But it's still not big enough. <laughs> Next up I need to trim these leg blanks using the template to make them the exact same as the template. And to do that, I'm going to use my router table here. Now, that might look like it's kind of in the way for my sliding panel saw, but it's not. Because if I bring this forward here, and keep in mind that the blade is right on the edge of this slider or very close to it, if I come across here and I measure from the edge of the blade, which is the edge of the slider, to the edge of my um, router table, I've got 1400 millimeters, or four and a half feet. So if I was ripping a eight by four sheet, I could put it on here, and it sits in beside this table, but it doesn't sit on top of it. So it's not technically in the way. It's very close, but it's not in the way. So to sort of demonstrate, I've got a sheet of cardboard here, because I can't be bothered picking up a sheet just for the hell of it. Let's assume this was four feet wide. I'd be standing back here. I've got just enough room behind the wall here. I can get it set up and push it on through. <laughs> Almost crashed into the camera. <laughs> so the first thing you'll notice about my router table is I've got a router on top of it, but that's, that's in the way. I've also got long lengths of timber in front of it. That just seems to be the best place to store long timber in my workshop. I don't really have another good spot for it. I could probably move all of this forward and then put the timbers behind it. But that's a pain in the butt. I just, I just work over the top of it. It's not exactly the safest thing in the world, but well, I don't hurt myself, so I'm pretty good. Anyways, this router is just sitting on top of my router table because it's a nice flat surface. Any flat surface within a workshop is either a trap or a storage area. Basically, it's the same thing. They're all a trap and they're all a storage area. I've just dumped this on top of it. So I'm going to move this out of my way onto another trap, I mean storage area, onto this workbench over here, which happens to have another workbench sitting on top of it, but this one hasn't been assembled yet. So under here, I've got my router, of course, which is connected to a router plate in the table. Now this is the Triton MOF001 router. That's their medium router. It's good enough for a table, but I would prefer to have the bigger one in there. I've actually got a broken, broken bigger one inside the house. It's broken, so this one's in there for now. When I break this one, I'll get, I'll get another bigger one. In the back there, you can see that I've got a dust port that collects some of the dust. Doesn't do a very, very good job, but it's there. And look, well, by the way, that's I turn it on by opening the door and flicking the on and off switch. I can reach in through the back and raise it up and down like that to set the position, the height position. Not the, not the most elegant solution, but if it works, it can't be broken. 
Got some drawers either side, router bits, router parts, odds and sods, sandpaper, just bits and pieces. And down below here I've got some empty cavities where technically I'd put my bigger router in there to store it. But because I've got timber in front of it, nothing really gets in there, nothing really gets out of there until I get rid of this timber. And then to get dust extraction connected to my router table, I take this big, big hose that I've got connected to the combo machine and it stretches five meters. So I can get it down inside here, not awkward at all. And connect it into this Uber. So now I've got dust extraction in there. One of the pipes is, there's a Y interchange at the back there, that one of the pipes goes into the cavity here, into the cabinet there, and the other pipe is usually connected to the fence, which is now free floating, and I'll just, oh no, I'll clamp it there somewhere, so that it at least sucks up some of the dust that gets into the air. And then to clean up the rest of that leg there, I'm going to use my edge sander, which is a new addition to my workshop. Now, I don't really have room for it, so I just make room for it because, because I work in this area here, I don't really work down there. It's just empty space, a walkway to get in and out of the garage. So I simply push it down here. And then when I want to work with it, I can simply drag it out there and it's ready to go. When I'm finished with it, I just shove it out of the way. So over here in the back corner of my garage, between this bench here, that little wall there, and my wood lathe, my wood lathe I don't really use much anymore, it makes a lot of mess, I don't really like having to clean up the mess, so it's kind of a deterrent to using the wood lathe. It's kind of fun using the wood lathe, but it really sucks cleaning up the mess, so I don't really use it. But between all of this, I've got my drill press kind of pushed away out of the way, because it's the kind of thing that I make a couple of holes and I'm done with it for the entire job. Every now and then I need to make a lot of holes for a job, in which case I physically drag it out into the middle of the workshop so that I can just use it quite easily. But for now, I've got a couple of holes to make in this thing, so I'll just use it here. So there's nothing overly special about this drill press. It's just a drill press, fairly cheap unit. It's got belts inside this cover here, which allows me to change the speed. It's got a depth adjuster here, which will stop it from going all the way down through into the table. And this bit of plywood sitting on top of the cast iron base plate here, that's just been stuck down to the base plate using a bit of double sided sticky tape. I don't have any fancy fences or anything, I simply mark a dot where I want to drill it and then I aim the drill for that dot. I hit it every time, most of the time. Every time, most of the time. <laughs> Now this sliding dead man vice combination that I put onto this Ozioka workbench, this is the greatest invention since sliced bread. This is just so convenient. I can't believe I've gone through my professional career without this sort of stuff for 20 years. 
It's just so good. So if you haven't got a sliding dead man and a vice combination like that on your current bench, mate, you gotta get out there, you gotta get one because it's the best thing since sliced bread. Better than the bloody wheel. And it's really nice to have a really flat surface to work from. I've never been able to measure up from a bench top like that for 20 years. It's such a really good bench. Should have built it 20 years ago. I just really should have. These edge sanders for a home workshop are a major, major luxury. But in an industrial workshop, they're, a, um, they're as common as dirt. Like you really need them because it really does speed up the time that it takes to sand and sand a project. Um, like I've just got a perfect curve there straight off a machine. Whereas to do that by hand, I've got to do a lot of work of finessing everything and doing all of this. So just if you can if you can get one of those things by all means go out of your way and get one I would normally have the fence set up for this cut here because I don't really, the fence doesn't need to be all the way up to the cutter, it can be set backwards a little bit, but it would aid in the dust extraction. At the moment, it's just throwing dust everywhere, but it looks kind of cool on camera and it's not really putting me in any extra danger because as you can see, I'm always pulling the board across the cutter. I'm not actually pushing my weight into the cutter. So if I was to slip, I'm basically going to move away from the cutter. I'm not going to fall into the cutter. It's just one of those things you learn over time, but it would be better to have the fence on there right now to have that dust extraction going. side table looks really good I really like it and as you can probably tell we've changed a little bit from the start of the video to the end of the video you've got some legs for a workbench that I'm building on behind that table in that back corner I've got one of the slabs for the top of a workbench and here's another slab in the clamps for the other top of a workbench and the workbench that I'm building is going to replace this crappy table that had a whole bunch of screws and just junk stacked on top of it, stacked underneath it. It was completely useless. It was a huge amount of space in my workshop, which was just being underutilized. So now I'm gonna build this. It's gonna be a really good quality joinery workbench, just like this one. However, I'm not gonna use it for a joinery workbench. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have my oscillating bobbin sander on top of it, uh, my bench grinder on top of it, my, um, scroll saw on top of it and underneath I'll have a whole bunch of little drawers similar to that of my router table something like that about that size and from there I could put packets of screws inside it so that'll deal with my screw problem and there'll still be more space under it so I'll put another couple of shelves or something in there so I can store some of the hand tools that I don't really use often Things like a scorp. Now, I use the scorp on this little shop stool that I made. I scorp the hell out of the top to curve the top, but I don't really use a scorp very often, but it's a very fun tool to use, I love it. So this will go under the new bench, along with other bits and pieces 
like a router plane or anything else that just doesn't really have a home. So with that said, this is really good. I might actually put this one into production. You could easily ship these through the post or through a courier because it's a nice small item, not too heavy. And when the customer receives it on the other end, they simply receive it like that with this little frame beneath it already attached. All they need to do is get these legs, get the demon bolts, put them through there, attach them. Happy days, they've got themselves a cute little side table. Anyways, thanks very much for watching and I'll be back with this big old workbench build coming to a YouTube near you soon, this year. No, next year, 2021. And by the way, I'm well and truly aware that my blast gates, they're not quite the best, but they do work.